between July 2021 and January 2022. Police reports show that tens of Kenyans were abducted, tortured and murdered with their decomposing bodies later discovered in different parts of the country. No words could explain the monstrous killings. The body had some visible tortures. That five-year-old Peter Mutuku and that six-year-old Philemon Chepkonyi were victims of the killings. Like this. Their remains were among that six bodies retrieved from River Yala. It looks like they were eliminated somewhere out of the county. Some of them are ruined having their eyes uh, closed. The families have since buried their kin, and no one seems to be giving Kenyans an answer on the underworld dealing behind the unfortunate killings. I do miss him every day. To Haji, to come out clearly and tell Kenya why they are killing people in Nairobi and, and dropping people in River Yala. Philemon Cherot Chepkony and Peter Mutuku Kia were all time friends. Philemon Chepkony, a father of three, was born and raised in Barisiele, Kericho County. Later, he moved to Nairobi where he ventured in a variety of businesses. Until his death, he owned a many much dealing with householdings along Kangundo Road at Kwamaji in Dandora, Nairobi. Philemon also operated an electronics and an impressa shop with the inquiry area in Pipeline, Nairobi. He co-owned a wines and spirit shop at Kware in Pipeline, Nairobi. After some time, the two disposed of the shop in Kware, as each one of them focused on separate business ventures. Peter Mtuku Keo, an ex-GSU officer who was based at Ruaka GSU camp, was a father of three and held from Kangundo Machakos County. At some point, Chepkonyi, Mtuku and another man identified in court papers as Timothy Kamuande Kaguru were arrested on the 16th and 17th of August 2018. Upon the arrest, Peter Mtuku and the GSU officer was interdicted. They faced charges of robbery with violence and the theft of a lorry estimated at 11 million shillings, which was the property of Narok County government. They were also accused of having stolen a water booth. Kustain manage le wana lindwa sana ni watu wenye waaminiki. The court was told that they had attempted to escape from lawful custody. They were later released on separate bond and the case is pending at an Arok court. Hawa kustaki hawa tena robbery with family. Walistaki hawa conspiracy to commit a felony. Upon their release, they continued following up on the matter till the 3rd of December 2021, when they disappeared never to be seen again. Our investigations revealed that Peter Mutuku left his home within Dandora a few minutes to 6 a.m. the same day he disappeared. Philemon Chepkonyi left his house at the same time, driving his motor vehicle a Toyota Town SK8390M. The two were in constant communication with another man identified as Edwin Kamanda. Kamanda is a father of three and a long distance truck driver who is still missing. He left his home in Dandora at 5 a.m. the same day. The three met briefly along Kangundo Road for a yet to be established business deal. Kamanda, being a renowned driver, was a close associate to this man, Shedi Shemargat. Shedisha Margaret operates a security company within Komarok in Nairobi. Shedi tells us that Kamanda had approached him a day before he went missing, requesting Shedi to assist him with his motor vehicle so that he could use it to visit his daughter who is a Form 1 student at a school within Kisi. So he told me to go to the academic day, and he was able to get out of the way, and he was able to get out of the way. So he was able to get out of the way, and he was able to get out of Kamanda had told his wife she had assigned him the motor vehicle to drive an identified man to a business meeting in Nakuru. When Kamanda came to pick the vehicle he had borrowed from Shemargat, he came driving Chepkonyi's Toyota car. He then left Chepkonyi's car within the premises where Shemargat operated his business and gave him the car key saying someone would pick the car from there. Kamanda likuwa naenda shule kuona mtoto wake. 
Chemergat then gave commander his motor vehicle a Toyota Voxy KCV466P and wished him well in the alleged KC journey. That was the last time he saw commander. It is believed commander joined Chepkuny and Mutuk where he had left them within Komaroka along Kangundo Road. They were destined to an unknown location. However, investigators believe their stop was in Nakuru. It is not clear if unknown individuals were on their trail. Police believe they were abducted within the same locality. As sources privy to investigations revealed that their phones were switched off within the same surroundings early that morning. Everything went on normal until family members couldn't touch them on their phones. Titus Muasia is a brother to Peter Mutuku. He was the first to smell a rat. So the following day, in Camp Pigaten, the phone did not go through. The same time, Chepkonya and Commander's family were getting disturbed. Commander's wife then reached out to Shamargat to know the whereabouts of her husband. There must be something wrong. We have got them in our system. We have got them in our system. After waiting on their loved ones to no avail, they decided to seek redress from the authorities. Atoko Saidika. Chamargat will follow suit on attempts to have his motor vehicle back. We can go to the police station, we can go to DC officers, we can go to process the car, and we can go to the police station. The tracking system in the car that they used shows the car left Nairobi a few minutes past 6 a.m. and it arrived in Akuru at around 8.45 a.m. It then made a U-turn towards Giligil. After an hour, the car stopped at Giligil Junction at around 9.28 a.m. Then drove for two minutes towards Gilgil Primary School and parked next to BCB Supermarket. The manager of the supermarket gave a description of the person who parked the car there, which resembled Edwin Commander. He says the man parked the car and walked away to an unknown destination carrying an envelope. Jacket ya black na kofia. Na hivyo ndio my husband alikuwa amevaa. The car was dressed, processed and detained by detectives. Later on, it was handed over to the owner after a thorough investigation. Mimi hata nilikuwa nafikiria kama ni kukua car jacked atungepata gari. Au the guys wenye alikuwa na drive maybe walikuwa na beef na mtu. It's not clear what happened next as Edwin Commander has remained undressed. I always have sleepless nights. Nikijuliza if he's alive anapitia nini anapitia torture gani If he's dead budi yake kwa wapi Days and weeks passed as the whereabouts of the three remained a mystery to both families and the state Tukakuwa tuko na hope ya kujua hata tutamuona During this period a series of disturbing events started unfolding in River Yala Hosi yes ananipigia saa kidogo diupit yake ananipigo kite iko mtu amereport hapa Ati ameona mwili kwa daraja huko ama ameona mwili karibu na shamba yake pale. You hear two have been found, three have been found. I remember talking to the OCPD uh, Yala and he told me the morgue was getting full. Bodies of human beings were being found floating in the river. The two which were found in the in the sack somewhere called the Dao. The the two of them were headless, but their heads were also fixed in the gunia there in the gunia. This went on for months as authorities remained unbothered until human rights activists got wind of the strange unfoldings. Kwa kiona, ukitoa kwa mawe hapo, nilisita tena. Ukiongeza hapo, sasa utajua ni ngapi, salasini na sita. No one has reported that mutu yetu alipotea. Yeah, so they are difficult to know from this. These bodies are actually dumped by individuals who remain so far unknown. The whole community was taken back in shock. Bridge kuna moja tulipata kamba, kaze tupa sibui. Vajala flows downstream across several counties among them Nani, Vihiga, Kakamega and Siaya into Lake Kanyaboli and then Lake Victoria. What could be the reason as to why just Yala and at this point in time? Historically, the river is a resource of water for the surrounding community and a tourist attraction site. But toward the end of the year 2021, it was in the news for the wrong reasons. Locals here do say they have been seeing an increase in number of bodies streamed down the river Yala. But their concern is more of a security threat. The reason is who is doing this and why. There used to be 
bodies, but not to the magnitude as at now. The dumping of the bodies said to have been taking place in the wee hours of the night. They are big vehicles. They come sometimes late in the evening. Another one was seen uh, around midday. In Asmahama, in Angusha, body na inaenda. How come these vehicles that are dump dumping bodies have never been caught? Hii ni ni mugu, mugu ya mtu. Yenye imewaze hapo. So ni magwamili hapo kwa mawe. Samson Odinga is a gold miner along River Yala. Uwa tunezaona bagi ikipita, ama gunia imefungwa. Imefungwa mwili ya mtu ndani. Kama enye imewaza, inona tu mahinzi. Kama zinafata juu. Lakini ya tunemukati na eh. Na mostly wa tunawananga asibui. He says most of the bodies were discovered knitted in sacks and floating in the river along this bridge that separates River Yala and the busy Kisumu Busia Road. Hata kuna juzi ngini ya ilipita, tukienda na ule jama. Tukadhani ni pe, kuchiki tukakuta ni mwili ya mtu, tukata teni kateremuka. Other bodies were a few meters from here stretching to Ndano Falls. The miners say an increase in the number of floating bodies caught them by surprise. Kuna siku zilipita kama kukwa lini? Zilipita tatu, kama zimefatana tu. Tukitaka kufanya kazi, unapada umekutana na mwenzako na mekufa. Asa hakuna vile utafanya kazi yako na hako hapo. Sao hata mungine ni unawana hako hapo. But why were all the bodies discovered at this point? The geography of the river around that yellow area makes those bodies, I mean, they get dropped. Below the waterfall, there are rocks. So that's why they come and then get stuck in the rocks. The bizarre happenings have left him disturbed just like Nicolas Okite, the diver who retrieved the 36 bodies. Na umejua saa hiyo, sasa imeyeyuka. Ni kitu ukitoa ni kama ujibwa. Watu wena kimbia wote. Sio binadamu unaona tu meno yote imebaki inje. Okite says unlike previous years where he could retrieve only one body after several months, at the end of last year events have turned horrific. Amalisi wiki mbili, tena moja. Amalisi wiki mbili, tena mbili. Na tena sasa zinakuja na tabia ingine, unapata mwili imefungwa kichwa na polithi. Amazingly, most of the bodies had a symbolic and a funny character. Body inawekwa kwa gunia, inashono mzuri. Unaweza pata mahali, unapata body kama atame ile iko kwa gunia. Kwa kila gunia ni body, kwa kila gunia ni body. Ukifungwa okay, yosak, he finds a human body mutilated. The news became a norm and no one was being arrested. The individuals who are doing this, how come they remain unknown? Months later, Okite became a possible target for crucifixion. Vitisha ile naona. Mimi ndiyo najua kwa rao yangu. Authorities allege that he knew something about the bodies. Niko na wasi wasi kubwa. He was also accused to have been hiding parts of the bodies in the river so that he be paid each and every time he could retrieve a piece. Hiyo ni uongo. Hiyo ni uongo kubwa. He was later to be arrested and charged for interfering with the dead bodies. Mimi, tangu mianza hii kazi hakuna siku, nimejaribu tufisa ya mwili. According to him, all these were premeditated murders by unknown killers. Nasima upate alifungwa na kamba, ama minyongwa na kamba. Sasa hiyo wesi sema mutu aliteleza haka inga kwa mwazi. Father Clement is the parish priest at St. Peter Clavers, Yala. People are now not concerned. Oh, there's another one there. There's another one there. He was among the first responders when this news hit Yala. Forthcoming electioneering period. We don't know how much people would be careless on human life. And if they have seen this, I was trying to say, oh, that might even result into lack of human sanctity. The priest is worried on why the local community around Yala remained silent with regards to the unfortunate happenings. But they are reaching a point that now they are not with the sea bodies like any other thing. To him, this was an opportunity for the church to pray for the repose of the souls of the dead, the killers and the affected families. And those people also can be touched and find that they are killing human lives and they can also hear the voice of Christ. Why are you killing my people? For sure, there couldn't be suicide cases for some of them. I don't see how someone could chop off his head and still go and drop himself in the waters. As the Yala Bodies news made headlines, families of missing persons in Kenya started making their way to Yala Mochari. To some, their journey was nowhere near over. To others, it was a tragic end of their long search for their loved ones. Families of Peter Mutuko and Philemon Tepkoni confirmed their worst fears.
Bodies of their kins were lying at the Yala mortuary in a deplorable condition. Kony's body was booked at the morgue on 4th December 2021, less than 24 hours of his disappearance. Niliona mwili yake na nipikwa hiyo kutezwa na tuacha tu na maswali. The body had been retrieved from River Yala. His body had signs of serious torture and strangulation. Kama ndungwa ndungwa na kitu kupo kama wilispana. Alafu hiyo kufura kwa shingo inaonekana ni kama alinyongwa na kitu kingine kitu kama waya they are now making some serious allegations watu wametoka Nairobi paka wanatupa hapa yale hizo za government they however have no idea on the possible motive behind the brutal murder of their kin and how his killers could abduct him in Nairobi only for his body to be discovered miles apart kuna hiyo ile zote 24 ilipatikana kwa mtu the same yale Irene Chepkony is the wife to Philemon Chepkony. The widow has been left behind with three children. Francis Chepkony is the father to the deceased. The old man is unwell and his son has been responsible for his medication. Philemon has since been buried and the family has been left in pursuit of withering justice. Peter Mtuku's body was retrieved from River Yala on the 5th of December 2021, a day after Philemon's body was retrieved from the same river. The killers killed him like immediately. The two are said to have been together at the time of the abduction before they got killed suspiciously. I think it should be classified as an extradition claim. Mtuku's family arrived at Yala Mochari to confirm their worst fears. Their encounter with the body was traumatizing. Alikuwa mepigwa with a bland object at his side the forehead the chest was red this family has questions similar to Chepkonyo's family a person like me will not uh, kill somebody in Kangundo or in Tala or in Machakos and dump the body 400 plus kilometers away Peter Mtuku's mother vividly remembers how she learned of the happenings at Yala. The family is yet to recover. All they want is closure. Justice delayed is justice denied. That someone comes forward to explain the mystery behind Yala killings. Kitu kinaweza kuwa kinaendelea ya kuwa watu wa nyama na kiunyama na muna hiyo, hiyo ni kitu ambapo kinaletea wasazi shita kubwa saidi. As the peculiar discoveries troubled the nation, pressure was mounting on the state of security within the country. The question we are asking, do we have a government in place? A team of homicide detectives from the Directorate of Criminal Investigation under the command of Martin Nyoguto was immediately dispatched to Yala. It comprised experts from forensic units, the government chemists, counselors, pathologists and scenes of crime investigators among others. But we expect at the end of the day a report which is comprehensive and which will try to give us some kind of leads for us to move forward. In the short life of parliament that is left, we may demand uh, an inquiry uh, by relevant committees in both houses of parliament so that the authorities can be brought to the relevant committees and reports made to the both houses. We are here for DNA profiling which was key on body identification and investigation. I asked the government Let's do DNA at birth. It would also help us identify criminals within our midst. Detectives also took statements from key witnesses and family members before analyzing general security preparedness in the area. Get into this. The number of bodies that are being discovered 
on a regular basis uh, cannot be something which is beyond the capacity of government to find out uh, who is responsible, not just for the dumping, but more critically, the lives which are being lost. Before the process began, affected families were taken through guiding and counseling sessions. Government pathologists also conducted an autopsy on most of the bodies. They are state. Some of them are uh, very decomposed in that uh, they are just skeletons. Some are flesh which is uh, decomposed, but there are three which we find which are very fresh. From July 2021, the number of bodies retrieved from Rivayana is 36. As at now, we still have 26 bodies here at Yala sub-county mortuary, awaiting the investigation process to be complete so that they can be collected by their loved ones for burial preparations. Out of the 36 adult bodies recovered, 10 were earlier on collected for burial before the news got viral. Later on, two other bodies were released to their families and 24 were left at the Yala mortuary, which only has the capacity of preserving 16 bodies. Among the 24 bodies at the mortuary, four others were identified on Monday after their DNA profiles matched with samples collected from families bringing to six total number of bodies identified out of the 26. Identified bodies are of George Ambongo, Eric Omeno, Margaret Atieno and Titus Lisutha, plus two others identified earlier. The victims disappeared on the months of August and September last year. Titus Lisutha disappeared on the 16th of September 2021 while he was in the company of unknown people in a private car en route Nakuru. The car was stressed, dumped in Gilgil, and his body in River Yala. The medical superintendent at Yala confirmed three of the total bodies were skeletons. Only two of the bodies were of the female gender. What I would do, I request is that uh, a very independent investigation. Both the pathologists and investigators' reports are yet to be made public, even as the government distances itself from the killing. This year, we're going to support so the police was not a law enforcement agency should do that. So when you have this, I mean those powers of doing that and locking you in and of yesterday the prisons are full. The man homes are full because what our actions across the country. So why would you want to kill you? The DCI also distanced itself from threatening Wakite, but said in the future if an opportunity need comes, the diver might be considered. Kasi yangu ni kutoa maiti kwa mati. Na natoa maiti na vitisho. Siyonge juu ya mungu. Among things investigators are looking at is what might have been the motive for the killings before going for suspects. The police are saying that they are going to go to the police and they are going Atikomba kuna ufisadi sana katika kutini na wakipeleka watu kutini hamba wa mshukio kuwa ni wawaji, watapeli, anilizo mashamba kuna kutini hawafungwe. So polisi wa mechoka. I don't want to be very frank with Kenya that it might take some time. Because the, the, the experts have to sit down and do their report first of all and then hand it over. Now to the other team of the DCI forensic experts again in terms of investigation. They have also promised to investigate if the state had a hand or if the killings were a result of crafty business dealings. For those people who speak outside there, they talk police, police, police. I think they should be more upright enough to come up with a better theory. A case of robbery with violence the two victims were accused of will be a matter of concern too. To not discuss, to not Julie's and as well. Feeling on Sasa. These are people with a criminal record, or some of them. Meaning, when they did something wrong, police took them through the criminal justice system, as it's supposed to be. And then later on, they are found murdered in some very crazy ways. So what's happening here? Families we spoke to alleged people who were mentioned in that case have been eliminated one by one. We were stuck in driver a lorry. We were in a lorry. We were in a Na, na kuna askari mwingine alikuwa karisa kwa kitu wa dhiongo. Alitoka akiwa pond, kwa pond, lakini ya kumaliza mwezi ya kawawa. Misha Kichepkuni tells us that an 
ex-police officer only identified as Ndiomo, was the last victim of these abductions and killings before his brother became the target. We reached out to Ndiomo's family through his wife, who warned us against linking her husband's murder to the Yala killings. Ndiomo was a police officer based at Garissa and an associate of Mutuku and Chepkonyi. He was abducted and his body discovered at Machako's mortuary some times back. As when you have a problem with somebody who is in court with the law, you take them to court, as you can see from the criminal record. Also, the whereabouts of two mechanics who operated a garage in Kariobangi are not known according to Meshak Chepkonyi. They were mentioned in the investigations of the robbery with violence case, Mutuko and Chepkonyi first. There seems to be now a kind of a syndicate, yeah, part of the underworld, part of uh, the criminal enterprise. It seems to be organized and behind this. You'll remember Edwin Kamanda is still missing. Kama ko hai akam home. Na kama yuko hai. Bodi yake tu ipatikane. Cause one watu wangu wanashinda wakiniuliza dada kwa wapi? On the other side of the coin, families of the killed victims are heartbroken. They believe this was extrajudicial killings and have faint hope that justice will be served. The families who lost uh, their loved ones, we feel their pain too. And we just want to reassure them that as National Police Service, we shall work with them, trying to unravel all this unfortunate situation that is unfolding in Niala. There's nothing we want to hide. We want to be very open. And whatever we get, we shall be able to, to share with them. And for them, again, we want them to have that confidence that you are working for their, for their, for their, for their, for their good and for their better interest. So if they have any information again, they should always reach out to us. The government is, however, absolving itself from the incidents, warning Kenyans against speculations on the deaths. If one says a police officer involved, come forward and tell us why you think so. If you feel you cannot talk to us, then go to Ipoa. We demand that a full investigation uh, be undertaken and uh, those circumstances be explained to the people because they need to know. So it's so urgent one with the crucial information to serve it to them and claim bodies are still at the Yala mortuary awaiting identification amid fears that more bodies might be trapped in the river. Franklin Wala for the crime bit.